Hey guys, in this session we're going to be looking at equation of a parabola, particularly the vertex form. So let's get started. So there's my parabola right there. The first thing that I need to, uh, for this to work is the vertex. Now the vertex, the vertex is right here. It's also known as the turning point sometimes. All right, that's the first thing you guys need to know. Now the general equation for the vertex is y equals a x minus h squared plus v. Now you might have actually seen this in different formats, but the version I like to use is h and v because h being horizontal and v being vertical. Now I'll cover a little bit more in the next slide, but let's carry on. Okay, so when we actually have three points and we want to try and make a parabola out of this, uh, the first thing is trying to figure out what type of shape this parabola is going to be. Now, in this case, when you look at it, you know that the parabola is going to look something like this, right? The most important thing to understand about a parabola is um, this particular point right here. That point right there, which is also it's known as the um, turning point, but sometimes it's also known as the vertex. Because if you're going to write the equation of a parabola in a vertex form, it's important that you have the vertex and at least one other point that you can actually work out of. Now, in this case, we've got two points, but really only need one point. So <clears throat> the general equation of the, um, the parabola in vertex form, it looks like this. And I'll explain what each of these letters will actually do. So it's going to look like A, X minus H squared plus V. Now, you might have actually seen this written in a completely different format, uh, different letters, but there's a particular reason why I like using H and V, because the H part actually stands for, um, just looking for a different color, the H actually stands for the horizontal uh, part, and the V stands for vertical uh, movement, I guess that's the, way, that's the way to look at it. <clears throat> And another thing that you need to realize is that the vertex in this form can be written as H and V like that. So if you look at the example that's actually on to my uh, left here, you will notice that the vertex is at 4, 5. So that means we can replace H and V straight away with 4, 5. So this equation now is going to look like this. Y equals to A multiplied by X minus 4. 4 squared plus 5 because the H which is I'm just going to put that in green that's right there is the H and then the V is the Y coordinate of the vertex okay so it's really important that you understand that part first once you get that <clears throat> the next step we need to work out is um, we actually need to try and figure out what the A value is and the best way to do this is by actually substituting uh, either this point here or this point. It really doesn't matter which point you use. You should still end up with the same A value. So in this case, I'm going to use uh, I'm going to use six seven um, as my points to try and figure out what the A value is. Which means now I know that um, the six is the X value while the 7 is the y value. Yeah? Sorry, just want to get rid of that. So that means I've got y equals uh, 7. So I'm going to replace that y equals with 7. A is what I'm trying to figure out. So I'm going to leave A as it is. And that's multiplied by x, which in this case is 6, minus 4 squared plus 5. Now it's a matter of rearranging. So I got to get rid of the plus five first. So when I bring the plus five to the other side, it ends up being minus five. And that equals, what do we got? A multiplied by six minus four is two. So we've got two squared like that. Then we go seven minus five is two. And then A, leave it as it is, two squared is four. So we got A equals four times A sorry, 2 equals a times 4, and then we can say a is equal to 2 divided by 4. So in this case, a can be written as half or 0 0.5. It really doesn't matter what it is. So going back to this equation, then the equation that I should be getting here, 
uh, it should be is, uh, what's my final equation? My final equation is going to be y equals 0 0.5 multiplied by x minus 4 squared plus 5. That's all I have up. Yeah, so what I'll do is I'll go through another example, um, and then we can actually look at um, how to generalize later on as well. Okay, and putting this in Desmos, this should work out as your final answer for this problem. Okay, so the second question, we'll be looking at these three points here. So we know that the parabola shape is going to look like this, which means it's going to be a negative parabola. Uh, our vertex is right there. So that's our vertex. We're going to call our h as 10 and v as 24. So our equation, which is our general equation, is x minus h squared plus v. I replace the h and v, so I've got x minus 10 whole squared plus 24. I need to choose a point to substitute. I'm going to choose this point here, 1620, because I know that it's a bit easier to work with. So what I then have is y is 20, a is what I'm looking for, x is 16, minus 10 squared, plus 24. So rearranging this, when I bring 24 to this side, it becomes minus 24. And that means I've got a, and then 16 minus 10 is 6 squared. 20 minus 24 is negative 4, and then 6 squared becomes 36. So I've got a is equal to negative 4 over 36. Now you can actually write this as an a value if you want. You don't have to actually simplify it all the way to the end. But in this case, I know this can be simplified as negative 1 over 9. So my equation for this graph on the left, with it, where it goes through those three points, is y equals to negative 1 over 9, x minus 10 squared plus 24. Okay, so in the next slide, I'll actually show you guys what this graph actually looks like. As you can see, guys, when we chuck this on Desmos, the graph looks pretty sweet. All right, guys, so for this particular question, we've got two points, but we don't actually know what the coordinates of these points are. So there's just two random points, it's just in a grid, and we've got to try and figure out the equation of the parabola for this. Um, now, I know a lot of people might be looking at the grid lines in here, or oh, maybe this is like one, two, three, four, and stuff like that, but um, don't think like that. These are just two points, and they could be anywhere, and we need to find a way to come up with the equation of the parabola. Now, the first step is really important. Uh, depending on the shape you're trying to create, um, you need to choose vertex. So, for example, if I choose PQ as the vertex, then I know that my parabola is going to be looking like this shape here, all right? Because that's what would happen if I choose PQ as my vertex. But if I choose RS as my vertex, then the parabola would look like this, okay? Now with generalization, it doesn't matter which one you choose. Um, well, I guess it depends on what type, you, what type of shape you're trying to model. But in this case, I'm gonna choose PQ as a vertex. So if I choose PQ as the vertex, I write my equation of the formula, which is a x minus h squared plus v. <clears throat> now my h is equal to p and my v is equal to q. So straight away, I got my first part of the equation, which is a x minus uh, h was p squared plus q. Now to figure out a, I need to substitute another point. Now in this case, the only other point that I could use is rs i need a different color okay so i'm going to use rs to substitute to figure out what the value of a is now i know that <clears throat> x in this point is r and y in this point is s so i can rearrange this equation here and i can write it as instead of y i write it at write it as s equals a uh, x is equal to r so I've got r minus p squared plus q. <clears throat> and now it's just a matter of rearranging. So q comes to the other side. It becomes minus q. And then here I've got a equals r minus p squared. 
Now, the biggest mistake people do is they take this and they start expanding it. All right, you don't need to expand it because all you're trying to figure out is what the value of A is and you just want to have A by itself, which means you can rewrite this as A S minus Q divided by R minus P squared. And that becomes the value of A. So then your equation is now going to look like this. So the equation for this particular uh, graph is going to look like this. Y equals to A, but the A we figured out it to be S minus Q over R minus P squared multiplied by X minus P squared plus Q. And that's literally how you generalize this particular equation. So guys, that's basically how you do this particular question. Now, in terms of domain and range, I will cover it in uh, the following series. But that's basically it for this uh, video. If you have any questions, pop it in the comment section below. And also, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.